Hi, I'm back with another vlog. Today I'm going to be talking about what Dick Richards had to say about his friend Nelson Sullivan. So basically what I want to share with you today is all from an interview that uh, John Sanchez did with Dick Richards, who is the operator of the YouTube channel Five Ninth Avenue Project. And this was for an interview that they did for BettyJack.com, and I will put the link to the full interview below. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole interview, but there's a couple of things that I wanted to share with you guys. But John Sanchez asks, when did he move to Atlanta, and what did he do when he was there? Dick Richards responded, Nelson never moved to Atlanta, he was all about New York. John replies, when did he move to New York? To which Dick says, Nelson moved to New York in 1971 after graduating from college in North Carolina. So we can learn in this article that Nelson Sullivan was a classically trained musician, and on his compositions, Dick Richards said, Nelson was a classically trained pianist, and his composition had that influence. John Sanchez asked, how did he meet Lahoma, Larry T, RuPaul, etc? Dick Richards' response was, I introduced all of them to Nelson. Larry T and Lahoma's band, Now Explosion, persuaded me and my business partner, Ted Rubenstein, to release their first record, and RuPaul had come into our scene through my cable TV show. These talented kids were all heading up from Atlanta to the Pyramid Club for shows, and I got Nelson to go over and videotape them. It was love at first sight, and Nelson is totally responsible for the main hookup that got RuPaul where he is today. Sanchez goes on to ask when Sullivan began his taping, and for what purpose was it for initially? To which Dick Richards responded, In 1982, I had been having fun with the American music show cable TV program I had been doing for a while, with my pals in Atlanta, and Nelson liked what we were doing. Egocentrically, I think that inspired him to begin a video project of his own. So Dick Richards also, I believe, runs the YouTube channel Mr. Richardson, and the contents of that channel, I believe, includes the American Music Cable TV show from Atlanta, as well as all of his archives from Funtone. Sanchez goes on to ask about how Nelson developed such a smooth shooting style, to which Dick responded, Nelson had figured out how to look on the lens of a camera rather than through the lens to compose the shot and somehow incorporated that with a natural physical grace that produced such sleek views. The smooth flowing style was his own creation. Sanchez asked, did he talk often about the taping, why he did it? Dick responded, he talked about it all the time. He did it because he wanted to. He very much respected the artists who were his friends, was intrigued by the oddities of life, and was in awe of being in New York. He was a diarist and a portraitist using elements of new technology. So this part here is something that really interests me. The interviewer asks, what do you make of his remarks on the pier on his last night, which could be interpreted as predicting his death? So if you guys are unaware of this, um, he's referring to the video titled Nelson Sullivan's Last Video, which was shot literally hours before his passing. So Dick responded, Nelson's remarks are so cosmic, and the 4th of July was his favorite holiday. Weird, isn't it? John follows up with, his death. Had he been sick? I understand there is some controversy among his friends as to what happened. Was there any with the coroner, etc? What do you think happened? And then in brackets it says, if anything is off the record, just tell me so. So Dick's response as published in this article is, Nelson was in a group of forgotten Americans that even today have problematic access to healthcare, so it's hard to know for sure. What I have been told is that the actual croaking was inside a hospital, making an autopsy unnecessary. One of Nelson's grandfathers died from a sudden heart attack at the exact same age. Perhaps the cause was a genetic disorder. So if you're not aware, the controversy that the interviewer is referring to, um, I'm pretty familiar with because I've um, heard from several people who believe that Nelson was actually ill for an extended period of time. Um, most people believe that he was ill with the AIDS virus and that they believe that 
The evidence of this can be seen in mostly the last year of his footage. The argument is that if you go through a lot of the last videos that he does, that you can see that he appears to be sort of wrapping up loose ends, taking care of business. Um, and in particular, the last video where he had what I guess could have been uh, the Freudian slip, where he says something to the effect of, I'm not running today because this is going to be my last day. And then there's a pause, and then he says not to run. And a lot of people feel as though he were either predicting the future, and a lot of people also feel that his passing was something that he had planned. Um, if you've seen the movie It's My Party, it's that kind of situation where he had decided that he was going to end it before he became too physically ill and too weakened and in too much pain to do so. Sort of the linchpin here in the evidence is also in that last video, um, and that has to do with the hemlock that is growing in his backyard. Now, his friend at one point says to him, I'm admiring your hemlock, and Nelson pans the camera over to the hemlock. Now, I know that there are um, several different kinds. There's a tree variety, and then there is the poisonous hemlock variety. I'm unable to tell from a visual inspection. Um, it does look like it's the poisonous variety, but the argument is that he was growing that on purpose and that that was the cause of his death. So from my understanding of hemlock poisoning, it causes respiratory arrest when you take enough of it. Um, I do not know if that would cause a heart attack or not. I just do not have the basis of knowledge to answer that one way or another. Um, but I find that it was interesting enough that they did address it in this video. I don't know one way or another whether he was sick beforehand or whether he just simply died suddenly of a heart attack. There's really not enough evidence to say either way. Um, and to me, honestly, it doesn't matter because one way or another, it does not affect my opinion of Nelson Sullivan. But I thought it was interesting that this interviewer addressed it, and I was happy that he did so. So the interviewer also asks him how he came into possession of the tapes, and uh, Dick responded, Nelson and I formed a partnership to combine our videos into a continuing series. After Nelson's sudden death, the videos remained with me as part of our agreement. Then John asked about whether or not there are copies and if he had seen all the videos. And Dick responded, There are copies of many of them, but not every one. I have seen a substantial portion of them too. However, Nelson's very first video collaboration, Mama Said, which is a drag queen opera about four brothers who live as four sisters and operate a dilapidated Times Square beauty salon, is so deeply disturbing that time and time again, I have never been able to make it through the whole thing. The interviewer asks if Dick has a favorite Nelson Sullivan video. Dick responded, I have many. I particularly adore the one of RuPaul, Trade, and Spicy at the Jane West Hotel because seeing their youthful innocence and optimism against the texture of a rat-infested flop house hotel with its majestic rooftop panorama offers so many pleasing contrasts. And finally, um, he asked, what does Dick think about Nelson Sullivan's videos? What do they mean and what is their value? To which Richards responds, Nelson's videos are beautiful art with an associated experience that simulates time travel. And to that, I agree with that statement 100%. So this is not the whole interview. I will obviously link the interview below if you want to read the whole thing, but I thought it was very interesting and it gives us some insight into the man behind 5 Ninth Avenue Project. So I hope you enjoyed this video. That's all I have for you today. I want to thank you guys for all the likes and all the comments, uh, like always, and for all the continued support. You can check out some of my other videos or playlists if you're interested, and if you have not yet subscribed, you can do so by clicking the kitty. I'll see you guys again for my next upload.